Tipman is actually getting away from the HPA, and we're gonna take a look at it in this episode of Airsoftology Reviews. All right, that's right, in my hands here, I have the new Tipman Recon AEG. There's actually three in the series. This is the middle length, the CQB, and there's two other versions, a shorty version, it's actually called the shorty, and a carbine, which is the longer version. So we're gonna take a look at the series, talk about the differences, and what makes this a unique AEG, including a feature I'm so glad to see on a gun that sits at this price point. All right, externally, we are looking at a mid-tier. This is kind of your intermediate level gun. You're gonna look at a price. I'm gonna go ahead and tell you the news around that $200 mark, a little bit above it in that area. That's your price point on this AEG. Polymer body, polymer build, upper and lower there, metal front rail on the build here. So that's interesting. It's a M-Lock. It's licensed M-Lock as well. We're not talking about like unlicensed M-Lock. Also in the package, you get three rail segments. You get these little short ones here on the side and a long one on the bottom. So you get three of those included. You can move them anywhere you want. They're modular, you can pop them off. Also you have flip up front and rear sights. They are polymer on those. So uh, they work, they do actually lock into place nicely and you can flip them down. With an adjustable rear aperture, you can go from thin to big. Metal components on here, charging handle on that. We have the fire selector as well and the trigger outside and the bolt catch, which is not functional on this. You're actually just gonna pull it back to access the hop-up. Hop-up in this is your standard style hop-up on this. So the traditional kind you've been seeing made of polymer in there, but the mech box is fully metal, so you're gonna have all the umph you need. But we're gonna talk about the mech box and internals here in the next section, because there's some surprises for that right around $200 price point gun. Finishing up the externals, we do have a polymer grip. Actually really comfortable, grooved here, good for lefties and righties, but this is the standard AG. Every gun in this category you're gonna find pretty much has just the fire selector on the left-hand side, so it's set up for righties. But again, if you're a lefty, it's no big deal at all. Not gonna have any challenges there. Moving to the back, metal buffer tube and a polymer crane style stock. Does have a swivel swing attachment point. You can do the quick detach one, which is really surprising. A metal piece in there. You can access this by popping the back pad off like on every every crane style stock. And of course that exposes the buffer tube and the battery storage inside. Rounding out on the front, metal outer barrel here and a plastic tip for the US. And of course other countries you're gonna see what you normally would get there, but you do have that metal outer barrel. So pretty much metal up here, polymer rails, like I said, polymer here and here, polymer body all around except the bits and that. Moving to the magazine on this, I wanna talk about this. This is a mid caps, around 130 rounds. Uh, it feeds pretty darn good. You'll see in the chrono test how well it feeds. I didn't have a skip and we were using an 11.1 lipo on that so stay tuned on that. It's kind of their own design. It is very stiff. It doesn't have any play or give, kind of this waffle design to it and it does have this o-ring which at first I was kind of like why did they put that around there? I took it off. The magazine fits in fine without it but with it in there the seal is just perfect. It just locks in It's easy, and there's no wobble, no play at all. I also tested this with some metal standard high caps. I know this is a question for you guys. They fit in there just fine. They fit, they feed, no issues in the back, and there's no real play in the body. So this is a really good designed outer body. Rounding up the externals, I do want to talk about the logo here on the side. No trademarks in this, doesn't matter. It does say Tipman here in Fort Wayne, Indiana, Tipman Tactical, and the Tipman Tactical Recon Carbine information or recon series on your design carbine. Carbine is the longer version on the side here, so you know you have a Tipman gun, but no licensing because on M4 you don't need it. It's just gonna raise the price of the gun for you. Inside is where you're gonna be surprised. And again, like I keep talking about the price point in this gun. In here, you do have a MOSFET. You have seven millimeters, like iron bushing, so actually really kind of robust. I know a lot of people love the bearings, but in my opinion, for being an old school airsofter, I've been a bigger fan of the metal bearing or non-bearing style bushings, the actual iron or steels type, uh, they just seem to hold up better when uh, you're putting any kind of ump or power behind it. Pretty zippy motor, no issue at all, running like I said an 11.1 on these, so I, I'm not sure what the TPA for you tech heads out there is and what the torque rating is, but I'll be honest with you, there's plenty of ump in this motor. Also the amp draw wasn't that much. Uh, on the chrono test, and I'll talk about the amp draw now, I was seeing around 10 to 12 amps at about 10 and a half volts on the meter. So we're not talking about a very big amp draw pull for this gun. 
And the other thing is quick change spring. And I know a lot of people say, ah, oh, quick change spring is not really a quick change. You gotta take everything apart. This one is, you actually can take the stock off. You can actually use your armorer's tool right here or just kind of get around it. You can unscrew it, unscrew the buffer tube. And guess what? You can get to the spring without having to take the gun apart. So for you guys who are not technically inclined that don't wanna to have to take the grip and the motor and all that stuff off, you don't have to. You can get here and change the spring, really change the spring. So I'm glad they went with that design. There's so many people that say they have a quick change spring and that still means you have to disassemble the gun, take the mech box out of the body and then do the work there. This one, you could do it with it in there. And that is kind of the nice thing. I, and again, a lot of features you don't normally see right around this price. Taking it to the chrono, saw the numbers you'd expect under that 350 mark, uh, floating around that kind of lower mid threes number, that's the 330-ish mark for the shorter version. So for the CQB and the shorty here, you're gonna see numbers that are gonna be field legal for indoor play in the United States. When you move to the carbine, you're gonna get much closer knocking on the door. I mean, ever so close with just a couple FPS fluctuation under 400. So it's definitely your outdoor gun. That's what I would normally expect to see. The short ones being around 350 or under 330 to 350. The big gun being as close as possible to 400 so you can have that extra oomph and range when you wanna to go to the big events. Rate of fire is pretty good. Unfortunately, the chrono here didn't have a rate of fire test, but it sounds like it's in the mid-ish teens. I was using a 11.1 15C LiPo battery on this to give you guys an idea of what we're doing. It does work fine with, uh, on some of my chrono tests, I did use the 9.6 actual battery system or actually a DC inverter system. So it cycles no problem with the 9.6 and no problem. Definitely taking that 11.1 if you guys wanna throw that juice on this. Well guys, that's it. It does come in black and tan. Like I said, the three different versions, three different lengths. Also, if you guys are watching this from another country, I know that's the question. You're like, well, Jonathan, Tipman's a United States company. Guess what? They have a UK version, they've got a Germany version, they've got the US version, and a Canada version. They're gonna be shipping this thing all over North America, they're gonna be shipping this thing into Europe. So, for those of you who have been asking, uh, sometimes I do these videos and it's like, oh, it's a bummer, it's only a US product, you are good to go. Um, in those other countries, I didn't show the chrono for that, you're gonna have appropriate chrono readings to pass your limits. For example, Germany, you're gonna have the actual weapon set so you can semi-auto only. Uh, in the UK, you're gonna have the appropriate limit there so you guys can use the gun and the AG as well. So I'm not sure exact prices once you do the currency conversion, but you're probably gonna convert outright once you factor in VAT and other taxes for your country. So that's it, looking at the new Tipman Recon. It's actually pretty rare I talk about something brand new, considering that Tipman for the, almost the past three years has had one gun in their lineup, and now they have 16 different guns here if you want to count all the colors and lengths and all the different countries they're shipping to and the different versions as well as some other stuff from Tipman. So Tipman is definitely popping up on the radar. I'm curious to see how well this is received. For me, it checks a lot of boxes for that intermediate rifle that everything's looking for. The MOSFET internals, the real quick change spring, the power levels right, polymer body, metal rail, and the accessories included in the box of the flip up front and rear sight and that. But I wanna know what you guys think. As always, I'm always asking you what your thoughts are on a new product. Will you give one of these a go? I thought it worked pretty darn good on the Chrono, but I wanna know what you guys think, and they're gonna drop here in 2017 if you're watching when this video comes out. I think limited a release here at the very end of 2017, and then full release in the 2018. Uh, you're gonna see them in pretty much every shop that carries Tipman products. So again, I'm gonna be uh, interested in seeing what you guys say. I'll be joining the conversation down in the comment section below. So until next time, go out, play some airsoft, have some fun, but no matter what you do, call your freaking hits.